I'm Major General John Kem, the Commandant of the United States Army War College. I'm honored to be here today to recognize uh, UN peacekeepers and particularly the UN peacekeepers associated with the United States Army War College for their many contributions uh, in the past and in the future in support of peacekeeping efforts around the world. As we all know, it's a dangerous world out there. COVID-19 aside, there's always areas of uncertainty, uh, terrorism, lack of governance, uh, lack of economic opportunity that cause really problems in societies around the world. And we're all part of the global commons. And so UN peacekeepers are often the ones that are put at the forefront to go in there and try to provide stability during those times and to provide an opportunity, hopefully, for a more civil society to gather around it uh, and to make a positive effort. And so today we get a chance to honor peacekeepers who go in those hard places, do those hard missions, uh, and it's an important mission. For us, the United States, we're actually the biggest contributor to UN peacekeeping, but we really do that financially. I think last year was something on the order of $7 billion we provide into the UN peacekeeping fund, but we ourselves don't really provide very many people that actually do peacekeeping operations. But our partner nations, our friends and neighbor nations are the ones who go put their soldiers in harm's way to help support peacekeeping operations. It's a chance to really honor them. And for the students in the room, uh, War College students, you don't know this, but uh, about half of your classmates, your international students each year, out of about 80, there's usually 30 to 40 that have in some way served in peacekeeping, either as leaders or just as part of peacekeeping missions during their careers. For many of them, for those countries, it is actually a mission essential task. When they leave here, they will go do peacekeeping operations. And so for us, that partnership between the War College and those students as we connect around the world is very important. And who helps us with that partnership is the Peacekeeping and Stability Operations Institute. It's been a partnership for more than 30 years here that started in the early 90s. And PKSOI has really been the DOD and Army lead on peacekeeping uh, and stability operations ever since. So whenever you're looking at doctrine writing and DOD efforts and Army efforts, PKSOI has been in the forefront and really helping to make all peacekeeping better through their efforts. So we're proud today to be able to honor all of those. Uh, special thanks to our current students that have served peacekeeping roles and will down, down the road, and also our past graduates. And then lastly, let me give a special thanks to the women students, past graduates and today, who are, have also served in peacekeeping roles in some way, shape, or form. Because uh, this is the special year where we honor women in peacekeeping, a uh, very important role. So thanks to all of you. I'm Brigadier Vinod Kumar Nambiar. I'm from India. I served uh, in uh, UNIFIL, Lebanon, in the year of 2006. I was a lieutenant colonel then, and uh, I was the uh, force provo marshal of the complete uh, UNIFIL, and as, also, as well as the commanding officer of the military police company. It was a multinational company, and initially I commanded uh, troops from six different countries, and later the mission expanded, and there were uh, uh, the contingent increase to include people from 10 different countries. Well, it was a wonderful experience to command people from so many varied countries. Uh, in the year 2006 in Lebanon, uh, there was a war between the Hezbollah on the Lebanon side and Israel. And it was a 36-day war, and that changed the complete complexity of the mission. And the, that is when I realized the importance of United Nations that amount of effort that United Nations took to bring back peace for the, both the nation or the, both the aggrieved parties to talk and bring back and uh, to an agreement for the settlement as well as maintaining peace was tremendous. Before that, I had an understanding of what is happening. But once the war took place and then we saw the process and thereafter how they were able to maintain peace for such a long time. Uh, that was very, very commendable. And because of the war, we all, I was, uh, also uh, saw how the other branches of United Nations come into and the role that they play in ameliorating the suf suffering of the citizens. So the importance of a united mission, a united nations, uh, that is when it struck me and that has always left a, a very big impact on my life. Thank you. My name is uh, Lieutenant Colonel Adil Fishtali from the Kingdom of Morocco. 
and I'm here to talk about peacekeeping since it's uh, International Peacekeeping Day. I have a couple of experience. Uh, the first one was in 2001, between one and two. I was deployed to Congo, DRC at that time. The mission, the UN mission was uh, named Monuk. I was a platoon leader as well as uh, I was a, a liaison officer as well as a translator. So I spent there for one year. That was the first, I was a, suit, a second lieutenant. That was my first experience. Now the last experience I had in peacekeeping, it was as a training officer uh, between 2013 and 2017. I was a training officer at the UN headquarters. One of the main uh, achievement, successful achievement I've seen so far is to bring the military and the civilian work side by side in a very, in VUCA environment, in, in a very challenging environment. That's one. It's not easy. I've seen it that one, yes, at the beginning in 2002, and I've seen it recently in Mali in 2014, as well as in Central African Republic. It is working. It's amazing. More initiative, more solution to cover uh, to overcome some some problems, logistic problems, uh, any initiative that could uh, uh, help the host nation to preserve and establish peace. I've seen a lot of initiative in Mali and in Central African Republic, and it is working. I have two United Nations mission experiences, and my first one was in Sierra Leone in 2001 for about a year. I was a military observer in Sierra Leone. As military observers, uh, we, we were responsible for uh, surveillance, monitoring, and, and reporting back uh, about the situation on the ground. But one of the most interesting job descriptions as a military observer during that time in Sierra Leone we had was disarmament. And disarmament uh, was the process through which you, you would disarm the, the rebels and I was deployed in two territories. Both cases, disarmament was a big challenge. So as a young officer at that time, and, and doing this kind of a job uh, of, of disarm, disarming rebels was truly a great experience for me. My second exposure to the United Nations missions was in Congo, 2011 and 12. Slightly different perspectives and slightly different mission set. Uh, first of all, I went with the contingent, an infantry regiment. I was a chief operations officer there. I was told to go without arms and kind of disarm 600 rebels who wanted to join the military. Um, uh, and, and, and the conditions they gave was that the United Nations, only one person can come with, without arms to negotiate. Uh, uh, such experiences are very rare, and, and I think these are these are professionally very rewarding. It tests your courage, your, your mettle, and your mental courage too, um, so as to make it happen. Each year, the United Nations designate the theme for UN Peacekeepers Day. This year's theme is Women in Peacekeeping. As peacekeeping has evolved to encompass a broader humanitarian approach, women have become increasingly part of the peacekeeping family. Women are deployed in all areas, police, military, and civilian, and have made a positive impact on peacekeeping environments, both in supporting the role of women in building peace and protecting women's rights. The United Nations continues to encourage the member states the further participation of women in peacekeeping missions.